Chew Faith. Oh, <clears throat> January 30th. Uh, I'm not going to be on here real, real long. I just came on because um, I just want to touch on something. Drugs. Just about every family has someone with some type of addiction. And if you don't, God, you're blessed. Just keep praying for your family. <coughs> but I talked to a friend of mine. She's a licensed uh, licensed drug counselor. And it, it hurt me so bad when she told me this. And I see people I went to school with. And I think I mentioned this before. Some of those people look older than my mother. And she'll be 90 in March. And um, one day I had left work for lunch. And I had gone uh, to get something to eat. And I was headed back to my office. And I saw a girl I grew up with. And I, she was probably uh, in the streets. Probably about five minutes from where I worked. And I just cried all the way back to my office. Because, you know, I, a lot of people, when they see people like that, they can turn their head. I can't. It bothers me because that. What made that person decide to throw their life away like that? You know, and and this girl, she had it all. Her mother had two kids. Uh, and there was three of us the same age, so we shared a bedroom. She had her own bedroom. Her mom was a nurse. Her dad had a good job. And I don't know what happened to her. She We went to school together. I think we, she graduated with me or maybe another school, but I don't know what happened. But it, it just hurt me so bad to see her like that and it's not very many of my female classmates it's a lot of the males though and so i was talking to my friend about it who's a licensed counselor and she told me she said linda was really sad about it she said you're not gonna believe this she said what's really sad about it the drug that they have out now can kill you the first time you use it the very first time and she say, for a drug addict, that's the high. You know what they say? Man, this drug's so good, it could kill you. And I'm like, you got to be kidding. She say, no, that's the mindset of an addict. You know, they're always searching for their next high. And that just broke my heart. And so one day last week, I don't want to always come on here negative. I, I thought about that. I don't want to always be negative. <coughs> and I just wanted to touch on something that had been on my heart. So last week, one of my friends is a preacher, and he lives in Texas. And um, he put down, um, he wrote, he said, prayer meeting tonight. What is your prayer? And I, I put on there, I pray, praying for drugs, addiction, sales, and usage in our neighborhood. And uh, I didn't go back to see how he responded or whatever. But y'all, oh my God. The very next day, he, when I took my lunch break, I went on Facebook. Why that night a crackhead came up to him and gave him his pipe and his drugs? Tell me that ain't God. Tell me that ain't God. Somebody came to his Bible study with a crack pipe and with crack. And after the Lord touched him, he gave it to the pastor. And then I think he showed Sunday where some more people turned in drugs. Y'all, we got to be praying. We got to be praying because we have kids. I have a son. I have a grandson. I have nephews. I have cousins. And, you know, some of them probably doing something. They don't have any business doing. But we, we got to go back to prayer. That's why I say we got to go back to the basics, man. We need to get in church. I read your Bible, yeah, but come, I'm telling you, because sometimes, like, <clears throat> like Ray will say, it's a message for you, and the devil trying to stop you from getting to church, because he know God got a message for you, and I can't tell y'all the number of times, like, a lot of times, I, I, I roller set my hair, and a lot of times, I do it on Sunday morning, because I can't sleep in a roller, 
and I don't want to roll my hair, take it out, and then my curls be flat the first day of church because I try to let the set last for a week. Y'all, one Sunday, I think it may have been Mother's Day, or was it Easter? <clears throat> I didn't get to church till I was 30 minutes, 30, 35 minutes late for church. And when I got there, I swear like the sermon just had my name written all over it. And I know a lot of people probably felt like that, but it's just something that you need to hear. That's why I say get up and go to church even when you don't want to. Because that time when it was so hard for you to go, you got ruined in your stockings, your car wouldn't start, and you almost burnt up your food or whatever. That's I'm telling you, like Rail said, that's the devil trying to keep you from there because God got a word for you. And like Rail say, you don't always get saved in the church, but it's best, you know, it's good to come. And I don't care what you have to wear. <clears throat> I don't care how you smell. The Bible say, come as you are. And, it's, and you know, people talking about, like real say, they're trying to get their life straight. Baby, you ain't got no sense to get your life straight. Come to church just the way you are. And I keep saying this because, y'all, it's so many people on drugs. It's, I work right now. And, you know, like, we have trustees to clean for us. This is a, a, a government agency, so we don't, they don't pay. We don't have janitors. We have trustees come clean. And I can't tell you the number of times the same trustees that come backwards and forward through here, they get out and get right back in trouble again. I, I'm telling you, if you're a mother and you got sons, please get up on Sunday and take them to church. Please, because it may be something, something that they can grasp. To change him. <clears throat> I always talk about my son. He's 17. He has autism, but he he knows the Bible better than I do. His Sunday school teachers will tell you when they have like little games and stuff, they be copping off of his paper. If I didn't do anything else, I brought him to church and I let him know who God is. I'm sorry, but I'm telling y'all, this problem with drugs, and you know, you just can't turn your head. If you're a parent, and you're an aunt, or you're an uncle, it could be something that those people do to persuade your child, or your family, your loved one to get involved with drugs. So we just got to start praying. Stay prayed up for them, because it's a sad day when you desire something so bad, and take it, and it kill you. And I was reading an article the other day, and they were saying that a lot of people are dying. And they're saying they're having heart attacks and strokes and stuff. And you know what's really killing them? It's that drug. You take it one time, and it kills you. Just that one time. And I'm not talking about nobody that I know personally. I'm just saying what I read. Last year, though, they, told, they said here where I live, I think they had 12 deaths. Oh. Uh, Drug related deaths. Um, and I just, Lord, I pray. I pray at night, Lord, take the taste, the desire for the drug. Just take it out of their mouth. Just take it out of their body, out of their spirit. All right, guys. Love you all. Have a good day. Bye.